a world made of language. One of my favorite authors, although he wouldn't admit it, and shamans, is uh, Terence McKenna, mainly famous for his ascendancy as the progenitor to Timothy Leary. McKenna made it his mission to enlighten his audiences about the very deepest fact no one seems to talk about, that our world is made of language. And when he refers to our world, he means this modern technological Western-style world with its materialism and embedded scientism, usually denying the reality of personal experience in favor of objective observations of agreed-upon consensual reality. News flash. These are not the characteristics of non-Western, non-technological societies such as isolated tribal cultures of South America, Indonesia, Africa, and the Australian outback. To these cultures, language does not define their worlds, and in some cases is avoided in favor of telepathy and dreaming. I was deeply impressed with the recent movie Arrival, which attempted to address this subject. As McKenna has said, if there are assumed to be intelligent extraterrestrial life forms, most likely they are so alien we wouldn't possibly be able to comprehend their purposes or their agendas, let alone their modes of communicating or transporting. The movie pivots around this point and ultimately shows how our reality is shaped by language. In the movie, the visitors define human language as a weapon possibly due to it being so limited that it was harmful to comprehend it. Conversely, the contact human, a linguistics expert in the movie, interacting with the aliens, was completely transformed by attempting to comprehend what the aliens were actually using as their mode of communication. As standard operating behavior and habit, we interpret our experiences as words. The feelings, deeper perceptions we have about the world are translated into words. We say it's because we want to understand those things and be able to report it to others, but this is really more of an excuse not to simply be without words and use our capacity to know outside of understanding. If we are filtering everything with the language we use to interpret it, how much of it is not covered by words, and so is lost. One of the exercises I was taught by my guru many years ago was the practice of non-duality. In this practice, we try to see the world and our experience of it as a whole system containing both ends of a spectrum, or a duality. Say we witness what appears to be a cruelty in the world. The non dual the non-dual approach would be to simply notice the kindness resulting from the cruelty. We try to see hate as a cry for love, a judgment as a desire for something greater. After practicing this for a while, you come to a place where language seems limiting, indeed a sort of weapon of limitation, secrecy, and control. Even in the New Age spiritually, spirituality movement, there can be a weaponizing of spiritual concepts by using them to belittle, invalidate, or limit another. Your fourth chakra is closed down, so you are a hateful person, for example. The non-dual version would be the observation that the person's fourth chakra is in the process of opening, as indeed is the entire being. Because our world is made of language, we can use it to define our lives in a more constructive and generative way by simply repeating the words to construct the life of our dreams. In light of the dualistic nature of language, the task becomes one of disciplined mindfulness, observing the negative thoughts as openings to a reality without that negativity, using the negativity itself to build a positive, life-affirming, generative life full of purpose, joy, and ease. Tune into the oneness. It's emanating from every point in the universe. Peace, baby!
You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx. www.pureenergyrx.com.